Hey everybody, this is Jeff from The Great Heights and Barely Controlled Chaos. And we're just going to go out and check on the goats this afternoon, me and the youngest. You can hear them, they're obviously very excited to go out. So, and here we go. All right, so they are running, heading back toward the grass back here, which they like to eat. I've got this fence set up here. It's kind of a nice guiding fence. It guides them right back here to where we want them to spend most of their time. I still have not had a chance to fix this fence, which kind of is annoying, but it is what it is, so. And they stop, of course they stop at the compost pe heap, which is fine, whatever. Here's our queen goat, Milk. Hey Milk, how you doing? Yeah. This is licorice. So she was almost pure black when she was born. She's got those nice spots on her now, which makes her kind of interesting. The black was kind of cool, cool looking, but this is definitely more interesting looking. So, and you can see our Billy War Machine here. He's actually starting to look more like a Billy Goat. And then there's Clarabelle. There's Crispy. She's starting to... All of a sudden, these two just kind of sprouted. Looking more like adult goats now. And they're heading down this direction. Nothing super exciting tonight, just hanging out with the goats. Letting them wander. Being a shepherd here. We let this section of our yard just completely go most of the time. Occasionally I'll rent a brushy hog and come out here and like mow it but it's been at least five or six years since I've done that um, you can see our peach tree right there it's actually that's our only peach tree that's really survived and you can see even it's kind of tipped over um, we kind of pulled the poles out and unfortunately that means they all tipped over and that one that one's a lost cause unfortunately and that one I don't know if it's gonna survive another year or not but then we have apple trees down here, and that's where that's where they're headed right now. We've got an apple tree that's kind of low, and they've got to, they can go and get the apples off of it. <clears throat> you can see, we've got a couple of apple trees here, and they're just they come over here. A to eat the brush around it, and then B if they can find the apples on the ground, they tend to go for them. Oh, another couple of weeks. And those apples will be ready to pick. A lot of them this year. That'll be good for us. We make we just, normally we buy about eight buckets, like five gallon buckets full of of uh, apples from our local uh, apple farm. But uh, this year, hopefully, we'll, we'll have to buy quite so many with as many are on our trees. We've got this tree here too. Milk's hanging out underneath. We have a pear tree, but it hasn't produced anything. Well, it produces a lot, but it's way too tall. It got out of control, and um, now would be a bad time to try to um, trim it. And unfortunately, we had a cherry tree that also went out of control, and now it's, now it's dead. But we do have another pear tree right down there. So, of course, you wander away. So. One of the negatives of just letting this area go a little wild. As you can see, there's uh, 
some sort of a um, vine starting to grow up into our, well not starting, it is growing into this tree. It's right here, you can see. So eventually we're gonna have to figure that out, but it's uh, it actually killed one of our trees last year, which is very unfortunate. But he loves watching the goats. just fascinated by them. There they are. So like I said, this area is just, we would really just kind of let it go wild. Um, it's it's about an acre and a half that we just got, out, got going wild out here, but there's a lot of stuff for them to eat. The goal obviously is to let them have much time out here as possible. Unfortunately right now that means with my work schedule and, and just everything going on it means a couple an hour or so a day. Usually at the end of the day like this I'll come out and let them just kind of chew on it. Um, the goal obviously was to try to get them out here quite a bit more but um, it is what it is. It's a little hard to see but we've got two goats that are really kind of, they're, they're kind of loners. Um, they don't hang out with the group quite as much. And they, they I mean, they they always stay close and they, they're actually really well behaved so they don't ever wander off. They're not the ones that we have trouble with. But they don't ever hang out with the group. And you can see the group of them over here. And those two hanging out over there. So four of our goats are for sale. Um, we have all four of our males that were born this year we're going to try to sell. Um, I haven't had a whole lot of luck yet, but I think because they're Nigerian dwarf goats, people don't really know what to do with them. I'll be honest with you, I'm not 100% sure what to do with them. They're really too small for meat. Um, and being that short, they're also kind of hard to milk so we're trying to figure out what to do what the best solution is here like I said we have a pear tree as well this is the pear tree you can see it is just it went way tall I have stories about when my parents owned a house that had a pear tree like this but all right let's see if we can find the other one so I realized that uh, my device ran out of memory and so I lost like Oh, probably a good five or six minutes of video when we were recording the other night while we were out walking the goats. I realized this, of course, as we're editing. So, uh, basically, we were just talking about the different goats and, and uh, trying to figure out what to do with them. Uh, one of the things that, that uh, we've kind of realized is that this breed of goat, the Niger Nigerian dwarf goat, we don't really know what exactly to do with it. Um, they're really kind of too small for to use as a meat goat, um, and they are being short like that makes them difficult to milk. Um, you can get a milking stand and raise them up and everything, but they're still pretty short, and so it's hard to milk them. So these, in my opinion, now I, I obviously I'm, I, I'm kind of new at this, but in my opinion. Nigerian dwarf goats are kind of like pets, and that's fine too. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, not exactly what I'd plan. Um, they're cute, and they work really well with kids, but they're mostly, as far as the production side, I, I, they're not really what I was hoping for. Uh, not that I'm complaining. I like the goats. Like I said, they're super friendly, and they're great with the kids, and um, even the ones that are not super friendly that we have, are more skittish and kind of run away from us versus, you know, being mean. Um, so that's, that's that. Um, but yeah, that was really what I was talking about. Uh, we do our, we do have four of our males that we're getting ready to try to, uh, to sell. I'm trying to figure out how to market those and figure out what to do with them has been our biggest challenge at this point. Um, 
once we got them so that they were stopped, they didn't run away anymore. But that's what I said. Um, unfortunately, like I said, I lost it while we were uh, recording, but uh, that's it. So um, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure you uh, like, comment, and subscribe to our videos. Uh, make sure you do uh, click on the bell up there so that if you'll know when we uh, put up a new video. And as always, we'll see you next time.